Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Today I wanna share some video clips with you. There is a movement coming out of South Korea, okay? It's called the 4B Movement. And I wanna show you what our fellow Americans, both the men and women are saying about it. A lot of women in America are supporting it and they want it to come to America. Okay, it says right here, the South Korea's 4B movement lowers the birth rate in a fight for gender equality. That movement, the 4Bs, no dating, no marriage, no SCX, okay? They're saying no. I know I just named three, but they're saying no to four things. And um, it was because of the patriarchy and the abuse a number of them were suffering from, from different levels that's going on over there. And they've had enough. They've had enough. This is their way they feel they are fighting back. You know, some of them want men to change. Not every South Korean woman is a part of the 4B movement, but there are a lot of women in America who want this and they're saying, I am ready for this right now. Let's do it here. I have to tell you, me personally, I'm not down for me to be in the 4B movement, but that might work for you. And I understand where it came from. I understand where it came from. And a lot of people are saying this is either go this going to force men to change or just get left behind or women just want to decenter men, find their peace and happiness, their world. You, you can be happy without centering your life around men. It is true. And it's different for some women. Some women can do it and some would be lonely and some women want children and a man. It's different for all women. So look, I'm gonna be quiet right now. Let's get into, into the 4B movement. What is this about? And how do the, the American women and men feel about this? Let's go. 4B movements in Korean means four no's. No dating, no sex, no marriage, no kids. The choice of word they use for the word no in this case is called B, which starts with letter B. So that's why it's called 4B movements. Bionne, bisexu, bihon, bitrisan. 4B movement, which if you don't know what that is, go look it up and come back. Don't worry, I've got you. The 4B movement over in South Korea is starting to get a lot of attention all over the world and the internet, so let's talk about it today. Like, what is it? Where did it come from? And why is it becoming so popular all of a sudden? And why do some people believe it is one of the main factors contributing to the fact that South Korea has, like, one of the lowest fertility rates in the entire world right now? So yeah, I would argue that it's pretty effective, and now it's starting to garner attention over here in the West with all the women who are also fed up with dating. There have been a lot of feminist movements happening in the past 10, 20 years or so over in South Korea, as there has been all over the world, of course. But a new subsect of women in these feminist movements are starting a movement called the 4B movement, also known as the 4 No's, which is a group of women saying no to dating, child rearing, marriage, and relations of any kind with men, if you get what I'm saying. And from my research, the 4B movement actually originated from a larger movement called Escape the Corset in South Korea which is interestingly similar to some behaviors we've been seeing over here in the West. But it's no secret that in South Korea, the patriarchy is very strong, right? And they have very strict beauty standards and like, you know, things you're supposed to adhere to. But a lot of women shared their stories about how they always felt like they had to have a certain amount of makeup every time they left the house. They had to look a certain way, act a certain way, fit in with society a certain way. They had to buy new clothes every season and it was just exhausting and they couldn't afford to keep up with it anymore. Does this sound familiar at all? But of course, naturally, they hit a breaking point and they formed the Escape the Corset movement. And part of the protest was that women just started destroying makeup and clothes altogether. But a lot of women noticed, of course, things weren't getting better and the issues stemmed way deeper than just physical appearance. Women started to notice things like South Korea ranks 99 out of all 146 countries for gender equality. That's really bad. And articles started coming out with surveys that were reporting that 65% of women in the whole country didn't even want kids and 42% didn't want to get married at all. And 80% of the people said the reason for that was because domestic violence was so bad. And on top of the fact that things were getting so bad over there, the South Korean government wanted to shut down the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family, which was the place that is supposed to be supporting women. And they started removing terms like gender equality from textbooks. They also noted, of course, that the gender pay gap was huge over there and there was wild amounts of discrimination from anyone who did choose to become a mother, so why would you want to? 
So essentially, the women got tired of the men and the government treating them terribly and ignoring them, so they decided to take matters into their own hands and said, we've had enough, we're done. And so far, it's working really well. So now all the other feminist movements in countries where, you know, laws are being overturned, such as here, are seeing that and going, oh, wait, maybe that's not the worst idea. And I haven't decided if I'm personally at this point entirely or not yet, although I've kind of been doing it for the past 25 years anyways. But I do think it's a very interesting thought to consider. We have the power to make morons go extinct. Can't wait till y'all use some of them powers to make white supremacy go extinct. Anywho, ladies, I love this faux beat movement for y'all. I believe y'all can do it, you know? I believe y'all can do it, you know? You know, birth rates went down, you know? Women aren't having SEX anymore, you know? These babies really just falling out the sky. Y'all can really do it, you know? This movement that y'all created, you know, and yeah, yeah, I'm rocking with it. Y'all can do it, you know? I'm believing y'all. I'm rooting for y'all big time. Leave us crazy men alone. Fellas, we did this to ourselves. These women are tired. They are so tired that they had to steal another woman's movement. Another race of women. That's how tired they are. They couldn't come up with their own scheme. They couldn't come up with their own movement. That's how tired they are. We need to do better. Ladies, we deserve this. Phobie for life. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what 4B is, 4B means that it's a movement that was started in South Korea of women refusing to date men. Do you really think you can fight biology? I'm a 3% man. Meaning I'm more conscious than most men and I'm more attractive than most men. I'm not saying that I'm the most attractive man, but I'm up there. I'm up there. And you think that your 4B movement will stop women from dating me? I already have many women that I'm dating now. And no 4B movement is going to stop me. It's not going to stop. Good luck, though. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what 4B is, 4B means that it's a movement that was started in South Korea of women refusing to date men. Do you really think you can fight biology? I'm a 3% man. Meaning... I'm more conscious than most men, and I'm more attractive than most men. I'm not saying that I'm the most attractive man, but I'm up there. Honestly, I'm not even going to touch on the 4B movement and the fact that men don't understand what that means. What I came here for is to ask you to drop the link to your magic mirror. Because it must be magical if you're looking into it every single day and going, this mug right here, top 3%. Because I want that kind of delusion. I want to look in the mirror and be like... This girl right here, top 3% of all women. Stunning. Gorgeous. Drop the link, dude. Drop the link. There's no first graders in Korea. Of course there's first graders. There's first graders everywhere in every country you look for. Your 4B movement is a hoax. You're being manipulated. Men love women and women love men. How, how ignorant can you get? TikTok has melted your brains. Oh, no first graders, yay! How are you going to celebrate there's no first graders? What, what does that do for you? <sighs> Touch grass, go outside. This place isn't real. It's all a lie. You're being lied to. Make some friends. 
the funniest thing about the 4B movement is it always comes from women that look more masculine than the men that they're talking about. And you know the exact women I'm talking about that have like the septum piercings, the different color hair. That and the funniest thing about watching a sad, bitter pick me talk about a movement that she has no idea what it's actually about. On top of the fact that you too have different colored hair. I see your roots, sis. Now, I'm not part of the 4B movement myself because I have an amazing man that I chose. However, if I ended up being single or if I was single, there's a high probability I would be part of the 4B movement, 100%. But the insignificant teeny brain is not allowing you to understand the reason why the 4B movement was created. The 4B movement was created in response to wanting to distance themselves from toxic and violent men. But literally are so far in their masculine role that the men weren't even looking in their direction in the first place. Are you joking? These men flock to hot, strong, independent women. They flock to them because their whole goal is to get them and then break them down and turn them into a pick-me. They don't want someone like this to begin with. They never do. I mean, what kind of adult content do you think these men are looking at? They're obviously not looking at plain Janes. And it's just another way that these women are trying to one-up men, but... Women wanting to remove themselves from toxic, abusive, and violent men is not their way to one-up them. It's their way to save themselves and protect themselves. All you need to do is think. I know it might be hard. The 4B movement is going to force men to be red pill. It doesn't matter if you're single, married, in a relationship. You're going to be forced to be a red pill brother, man. And if you're already a red pill man right now, this 4B movement is a victory for us because everything that we've said, every, every boundary that we set, that's what we meant. And they, and this is why they have to do what they have to do. You understand what I'm saying? Because we told them we don't want no old single mothers. We don't want women with high body counts. And so with, with that being said, like they have to do this, guys. You have to understand this is a victory for men. Because listen, we know that the majority of the women who are talking all this about the 4B movement, They've hit the wall. They're over 30. They had children before they got married. They've never been married, but they got children. And they got a high body count, bro. You know what I'm saying? So they're they're doing us a favor. I'm so glad you asked. The 4B movement is a movement in South Korea right now where the misogyny and sexism is so bad that South Korean women have decided to opt out of dealing with men entirely. That is not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. They are not dating men. They are not marrying men. They are not having children with men. They're not even sleeping with men anymore. And it's called the 4B movement because the Korean words for those four things all start with the letter B. This kind of first started happening around 2016 when Kim Ji Young, born 1982, a novel came out. And it is a fictional book about a Korean every woman and all of the misogyny and sexism that she's experienced from literally being a child all the way to her being an adult suffering with postpartum depression after having her child now this book became a runaway bestseller among south korean women because they were like she's just like me for real and that's kind of when it started cooking right now the movement officially got its name in 2019 and it's just been going ever since it's so successful in fact that now south korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world the number of deaths in south korea outnumber the number of births in south korea and it's hilarious because all the men and the government are like oh my god what do we do we they, they don't want to like talk to us they don't want to date us they don't what do we do like everything's in shambles we don't know what to do when south korean women have been very clear from day one they're like hey either you get your act together or we are literally eliminating all of this like we are shutting it down so that's the 4b movement and why i'm so obsessed with it and why i think we should have the 4b movement everywhere thanks for listening bye so we already let the white women convince us to kick out the black fathers and we didn't need black men with the feminist movement and now this 4b movement we about to let these women from korea convince us to not create families in a black community and I'm seeing women, I, I just did my research, I, I saw a few videos and I see women talking about, I've been on a 4B move, I'm on a 4C, D, E, F. We don't need these men, we gotta strategize, we gotta do, we gotta get strategic about how these men are about to come after us. Y'all been talking about decentering men. Like, y'all gotta wake up. This is not beneficial to us. If y'all think the strategy is 
getting rid of men, not having families, not having babies. That's going to be a lonely, lonely life. All it is is a way to keep you single and by yourself. And that is not a healthy, um, happy, fulfilling life to be by yourself. Who wants to be by yourself? Like, seriously. I know we talk about I'm single by choice. Okay, for now. For now, which is cool. But y'all, so we about to... This is was this is what we are strategizing. Not strategizing how we can create families, how we can better our community. We strategizing on how we can lock in as women and you know uh, I'ma pray. I I'ma pray. The most wild thing to me about the 4B movement is the outpouring of women who are realizing how much of a good idea it is, and the outpouring of men who are like, they can do that. I know it's a fairly recent thing, man, but yeah, women can get their own homes, live their own lives, and do basically everything that they want to without centering men around their lives. And it's very telling to think that this is a threat to you. You would think that some of you would see this as a step towards getting rid of the patriarchy and removing some of the stress in your life around being a traditional man, even though some of you may still want to be. But with the 4B movement, women don't need to center men around their lives because women don't need men to survive anymore. It was a fairly recent thing that women could start voting and having bank accounts. And in some men's minds, it's only going to get worse from here. So with women not needing to rely on men anymore for housing and having actual money, men might have to start doing insane things in order to attract women like having a personality. I just think that feeling threatened during a movement where women decenter men from their lives is a very big tell. The fact that you have the ability to live on your own and have your own apartment is a huge deal. The fact that you have the option to not get married and not have children is a huge fucking deal. I don't think you realize how much women would have killed to have these options in the past. They did not have the option. Okay, and the reason why so many people have these shitty ass fathers is because women had to choose somebody because they had no options with their lives besides being a mother and a wife. And if you had a less than ideal mother, the odds are she didn't fucking want to be a mother. She just felt like that's what she had to do. She could have had dreams and aspirations that went beyond being a mother and a wife. But since that is what society told her, it's all she could do. That's what she did. And a lot of women are resentful over that. Women were not allowed to have their own bank accounts until 1974. I don't think you realize how recent all of these developments are. We are on the brink. We are on the breaking point of things looking totally different in the next 10, 20 years than they have throughout the entirety of humanity. Do not take that for granted. This is not the time to split hairs. This is the time to mark the fuck forward. This is the time to decenter men and focus on your own life. You have that opportunity now. We never had that opportunity before. It is a blessing. So if you don't have a boyfriend or husband or whatever, and you feel like you're behind in life because you don't, I'm telling you, it is a blessing. Don't settle. If you find this perfect, amazing man, then then that's that's wonderful. Hold these men to a high fucking standard if they're going to be in your life. Because you do not need them. You do not have to have them. And if you pick the wrong one, it'll not only hold you back, but it'll hold generations back. Like the 4B movement? Is that not of the devil? Like it's literally evil. These women are talking about how they're not going to date men, sleep with men, procreate with men, and all these other things, right? And it's like, wow, like what are you going to do? Feminism is going to lead these women into dating each other. This is not going to benefit you in any way. This just screams you hate men. Like, imagine if men got on this app and said, oh, yeah, we're going to participate in the four Bs and we're not going to sleep with women. We're not going to talk to women or date women. You know, we would get shamed for that. It'll be it, actually, you know what it sounds like? It sounds weird. Like this literally goes against human nature. You're not going to sleep with men and procreate with men and marry men. Welcome to the find out portion of fucking around where women literally don't care if we go extinct. Like literally women all over the world have decided that if the choice is to be married to a man who treats us like nothing, who gives us no incentive or benefits to being in that relationship, or the population dying off, we will let it die off. Don't worry, it won't, because there are plenty of women who will still sleep with you. But those aren't the women you're going to want. No, you're going to want the women who don't want you. 
Otherwise, this wouldn't bother you so much. Because it's not actually about wanting what's best for humanity. It's about you wanting to control the women you can't. Also, I think it's cute that you think if you came out and said you weren't going to sleep with women anymore, we'd actually care. Most of us just want you to leave us alone. Also, marriage isn't natural. It's a contract. It's about ownership of property, women. And study after study have shown that men who are married are happier and live longer. But women who are married are less happy and don't live as long. Oh, and sweetheart, it's not about misandry. It's not about us hating men. It's about us expecting men to evolve and be better and you choosing not to. So if you don't like this, if you don't like the fact that women have said, you know what, we're done, we're peacing out, let it die off, you have no one to blame but yourselves. So there's this movement out there called the 4B movement, right? Where women have taken it upon themselves to literally cut off all ties with men, all relationship status with men, because they are sick and tired of these so-called men, little boys, treating them like shit and abusing them, which shouldn't be fucking happening to begin with. So what do these knuckleheads decide to do to counteract this so this 4B movement? They've decided to treat women like shit even worse. Like, that fucking makes a lot of sense. This is the reason why you're in this situation to begin with, gentlemen. See, I have my beautiful big booty Bahama Mama Queen at home that I would fight the fucking devil for, and I wouldn't even, wouldn't even fathom my brain to treat her like shit because that is my fucking queen. So, gentlemen, what you need to do is fix your fucking self because one or two things are going to happen. Number one, women are literally going to cut all ties off with men and stay single. Or two, they're going to find a man or a partner that treats them like a queen and you're going to be in the basement beating your meat like Rocky Balboa. So you might want to go ahead and fix yourself. 4B movement is a victory for us because we told them we don't want no old single mothers. They hit the wall. They're over 30. They had children before they got married. And they got a high body count. They're doing us a favor. I don't care how many men make videos like this, act like they don't care that women don't want to marry them or have their children. We're all very well aware that there is a single male loneliness epidemic going on right now. There's not a single woman loneliness problem. The 4B movement is about decentering men and here they are doing what they always do and that's putting themselves in the center of somebody else's movement. They have been trying their hardest to co-opt any movement that women get. We say we want a, a soft life, here they are talking about they're in their soft guy era. We say sprinkle, sprinkle, now they're talking about drizzle, drizzle. Like every time we make a movement, they try to mirror us. How are you the leader when we're always following us? I guess we must be the leaders. I think the men are becoming afraid because they're realizing a woman's power. When they see these uh, decreasing rates of marriage and childbirth, they're realizing that it's the women who have decided to make it that way. So they've always come up with some kind of scare tactic, some kind of manipulation, but the latest tactic is to act like it was their idea. We actually like this, right, fellas? We, um, wink, wink. Yeah, we, we, this is what we want too. No, this isn't what you want, but it is what you're going to get. The manipulation and scare tactics aren't working and they never will. You're going to have to do the one thing you have been avoiding the whole time, and that is change and become a better man if you ever want to be with any one of these women. No one is settling for you anymore. But my love, mi amor, the 4B movement is in full effect. I don't even know why you're worried about it. We all in this. Okay, if you are on a dating app right now, which you should delete, but if you're on a dating app right now, you have a date next week or tomorrow, go ahead and try to enjoy that. But if you see that it's not going nowhere, just delete the dating app. Let these dudes stand on business. Let these men romantically socialize themselves again because mm, we're not doing it. We're not. That man who was like, oh, y'all going to have to settle. No, we're just not going to date. 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 Why are some men so pressed about the 4B movement making its way to the States? The same women that's going to be partaking in that movement is the same women y'all didn't want anyway. So what are y'all pressed about? Women are so sick of like the shenanigans of the other side of the species. So much to the point that birth rates are declining all over the world. Women are literally like, you know what? We'll just let the species die. Like the human species can just be no more. 
instead of dealing with the just wildness that women have to deal with in today's society. I mean, when you really think about it and like you kind of look around, we have all these conversations about like, what do you bring to the table? And, you know, the debate between like stay at home wives and working mothers and all these other things. And like the expectations put on women is crazy on top of the fact that you need us to repopulate the earth. And we're flat out like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. I think, I think I just won't. And as a person who has children, like I love being a mom, but I fully support women who are like, I don't want kids. Because while I love and enjoy being a mom, I understand firsthand the nuances in being a mom and how hard that can be, especially in today's society. So welcome to the end, people. Seriously, I have an honest question. Did all of us become celibate like a year and a half ago, two years ago? I did a year and a half ago. Like, I don't even care. Just give it six months and you're just like, what? Oh, ew. Ew. And then like, yeah. Your health is much better, your sleep is much better, your life is much more peaceful. So who's already been doing the 4B movement? Well, yeah, I haven't dated at all. My life has, this has been the best year of my life. Like in terms of just working on myself and my career, like, holy shit. I was thinking about that in bed last night. I was like, what was the worst time of my life and the best time of my life? I've had some very hard things happen, but... As far as happiness, this is the happiest I've ever been. So anyways, the four B's stand for basically no sleeping with men. No dating them, no marrying them, no sleeping with them, no making babies with them. Who's down? Also, I'm thinking like something like we need to build a commune in the forest so that we can frolic around and do whatever the hell we want. That's my ambition. More and more American women are wanting to join our Korean sisters in the four B movement especially after the New York Puncher emerged. He has been since identified as Skabokibi Stora, Marcus Garvey's grandson. He's been going around punching random women in New York. He even had the audacity to create a TikTok page, posting the videos of his attacks on these women. The 4B movement is a feminist movement that started in South Korea in 2019. In this movement, women are choosing to reject four major activities. I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try to pronounce these words, so I'm just going to name them B1, B2, B3, and B4. B1 is having intercourse with men. B2, raising children. B3, dating men. And B4, getting married to men. This movement is a direct response to the deeply rooted patriarchal culture in South Korea. The culture has led to several issues, including gender discrimination. Women in South Korea often face discrimination and unequal treatment compared to men. Unequal domestic labor. Women are expected to take on a disproportionate amount of household chores and childcare responsibilities. Violence against women. Many women in South Korea experience various forms of violence, including physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. The 4B movement is a way for women to stand up against these problems and create a more equal and just society. By rejecting traditional roles and expectations, the women involved in this movement are taking a powerful stance and demanding change. I think it's time that women in America need to start their own version of the 4B movement because men ain't shit. What's this I'm hearing about a 4B movement? I know I'm late to the game, but bring it on here to the U.S. Bring it on here. Convince all the women here to hold back their pom pom. Because me, I have six kids. And it's hard to find a man to take care of me and my six kids. But if you guys want to hold back your pom pom, I finally get a chance. So bring that movement here. Because what is that really going to do? If all the women were on the same page, then something might happen. But everybody's not going to be on that same 4B movement. So while you're doing that... I'm going to be right here to slide on in and get me a man. Let's go. Power to the people. You can't be mad that the chick that you want because of what she looks like doesn't want you. You only want her for what she looks like anyways. She doesn't have the other qualities that you're looking for. Leave her alone. I don't know that. I want to, I want to be, you know, I like she, what I see. I want to no, hear no, and get to know her better. But, no? but that's like, sweetheart, <laughs> they're talking to the women that are saying they're not going to cook. Leave them no, alone. No, well, they find, they find out she's not going to cook after they speak to them. Okay, and then you're like, okay, then leave her alone. That's what I'm saying. There's somebody for everybody. The chick that doesn't want to cook, leave her alone. But how many men other than chefs don't want a woman who's nurturing and wants to cook for them? And caters them. How many men don't want this? I don't know the answer to that. I okay. would imagine that most men do want that. Right. The, okay. well, there are things that women want mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We know what they are. And they might not get it. They might get it. They might not. Men can yeah. say what they want. They might get it. They might not. It's the same well, thing. Why can't men just leave women alone? What? Serious? Why can't men just leave women alone? The way she had to say, just leave them alone 50, 11 times. And this man was so resistant just to the idea of leaving a woman alone who's not interested in him. Every time I've ever done a post about the 4B movement in South Korea where women are saying they don't wanna deal with men anymore, without fail, I have a bunch of dudes in the comments complaining and trying to prove to us why we need them, how bad it's gonna be for us if we stop dealing with them. And my question is why? I mean, I know I'm gonna actually regret this, but I actually wanna know. I would love some men to come in and tell tell us women, why can't y'all take no for an answer? Why do you need to force yourself on people who are not interested in engaging with you? Why was that guy in the Stitch video so resistant to the idea of just moving on to another woman who actually might be interested in him and might be what he's looking for. What is, what is it? Because whenever somebody tells me they don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with them. One of the reasons I chose to be child free is because I've seen too many women basically becoming ghosts in their own lives. Back in my 20s, I met a woman that was 30 at the time and she was everything I wanted to be. Strong, independent, successful. She was the kind of woman that didn't need a man but that wanted a man. You know the type. The problem wasn't becoming a mother or having a child. It was how society and her partner slapped a label on her. Just a mother, not a woman anymore. And being a mother comes with a whole playbook of double standards. She gave birth, stayed home, took care of the house, took care of the baby, the whole shebang. And what did society call that? Not work. Her partner was also the typical man that was saying, let me help with the baby thinking that that means actual parenting. Then there's this gem. When she wanted to go back to work, you know, revive her business, you know what people said? But the kid needs the mother. And you weren't you're going to miss their childhood? Because apparently being a successful woman and a good mom are mutually exclusive. It was useless that a couple of people in her life, including myself, told her, hey, this is BS. Do what makes you happy. And when the majority thinks of you in a way, you tend to believe them. Especially because you want the best for your child, right? She grew up knowing for a fact that everyone loves breasts. Everyone wants you to whip them out until you need to breastfeed. The fact that she had to breastfeed in bathroom stalls makes me think we're delusional when we think of ourselves as an advanced species. But more than anything, what really surprised me to my core was the fact that her partner was complaining that she's changing, that she's more serious, that she doesn't smile much. Yeah, maybe because she's having postpartum depression. Maybe try and, I don't know, support her. You don't know how. Crazy thought, Um, Google it, research it. For God's sake, there are men that are playing video games per hour or planning their fantasy football teams, but you can't research how to be a supportive partner or how to parent full-time, not as a part-time gig. Maybe that's why movements like 4B are becoming so popular nowadays because collectively we don't appreciate mothers. We don't make space for them, we don't think of them, we don't share their loads. They're expected to work but not complain, to become good mothers but never change, and treat their partner like a man but also like a child. Telling him what to do as a parent even though no one tells her. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against motherhood, I'm all for making sure we appreciate it. Because it can be there in one breath we complain about it and we say, well, who told you to have kids? But at the same time we're gonna blame women for the population decline. Like, it's like you're saying to a broke artist, who told you to be an artist? But then you lose your mind when they want to actually monetize their work instead of giving it to you for free. Of course, this is just one of the reasons. Every time I see a video of a woman talking about like, oh, men are XYZ, men are XYZ, and then under the comments, the, under the comments, uh, people like saying that, like, oh, let's do the 4B movements, let's, baby, you can even boycott for one week. Let's start there. Let's start there. Y'all can even boycott for one week. Y'all can even united, united to stop the government from banning one app. Y'all can even united to, to stop so many things that's currently happening. Y'all can even do that. But y'all want to start the 4B movement like Korean woman. Baby, y'all will never be able to handle that. Let's start speaking truthfully. Y'all will not hate me. <clears throat> Y'all will not be able to handle that. I'm really trying my best not to be into controversy, but some of y'all are literally pissing the fuck out of me. The phobia movement, the fo- Y'all will not be able to handle that. We have too many pecnesia to start the phobia movement. There's a lot of American women who are pecnesia. Every time a man move, yeah, 
like I'm not I'm not even into all let's the center man let's like because I do believe that people us human nature need a companionship like I believe that okay I do believe that so dissenting men dissenting men like it's not really my prerogative like I really don't give a fuck about that but I care about when other women are doing something important and then we have American women who saying like oh let's do the big movement let's... baby start boycotting first let's start boycott first Let's start there. If you can do, if you can boycott for like a month, two months, then you are able to talk about the phobia movement. Some, I'm, I still see some of y'all drink Starbucks. I still see some of y'all drink Coca Cola. Y'all still buy Nestle. I thought we were boycotting Amazon. I just saw a fucking influencer doing an unboxing Amazon package. <laughs> person i see fucking commenting the 4b movement oh wallahi bilahi ibola mama na yo oh men have done some terrible things over the years in an attempt to be necessary we all know that we need women in order for society to function Y chromosomal data shows us that at one point in human history there were about 17 women to every one man. And clearly humankind did not die out. But what would happen if we had 17 men to every one woman? Reproduction rates would be pretty low, and the chances of that one woman surviving long enough to reproduce are unfortunately not great. Men just don't have a good track record for being safe for women. So it is well established that women are necessary for the survival of our species and for society to function. But that begs the question, are men necessary? how necessary are men. And that has made men feel very self-conscious. Are we needed? And that has made men for a long time want to make claims about what men can do that women can't do. Men have a tendency to be better at violence than women. So we have to have some reason that society needs violence. Men are so good at violence that women are in danger, so we need other violent men to protect them. For men to be necessary, we need violence, we need danger, and we need wars. Historically, it has been the belief that we need men to fight in all of the wars. But in reality, men have needed wars to be necessary more than wars have needed men. Recently, there was the creator on this app that said, how hard could it be? Boys do it. And we saw these men on oil rigs saying, ah, oh, look at these manly men, can women do that? Well, yes, women can do that. But I would say that the entire Industrial Revolution was an attempt by men to be necessary. It was a need to create male-dominated industries and then have a society structured to depend on those industries. Oil rigs exist because of our dependency on fossil fuels. We built societies where we live far away from where we work so that we depend on those fossil fuels to get to our place of work. We would be better off without the oil rigs. We would be better off without this dependency on fossil fuels. Here in the United States, most of us don't live in walkable communities because of that dependency. Because of that industry creating a society that has a problem that they are the solution to. This has been the way of men for generations. Create a problem and then be the solution. For us to have a better society, men have to be okay with the fact that we're not needed. My wife does not need me. She has a good job. She makes enough money that she could hire people to do all the things she doesn't know how to do. She has a strong group of friends, a good support system. She doesn't need me, but she wants me in her life. She wants to do life with me. Men have worked so hard to try to force society to need us that we've completely neglected any attempts at being what society wants. We're trying to create scenarios where women need us instead of being people that are desired. So when you see all these men that are dating coaches and whatever they are, telling other men how to interact with the world, how to interact with women, ask yourself, are they trying to connect with the world around them and improve the world around them? Or are they trying to manipulate the world around them to create a dependency 
on them? Are they trying to do life with the people around them or are they trying to create a problem for the people around them that they are the solution to? Is their message coming out of their insecurities about not being needed? Or have they discovered a space that they really are connected in and they feel wanted and desired? And they want to share with others what it's like to find that space. Because we have got to stop destroying the world because we don't feel needed. Men can't believe that women are single by choice because men aren't single by choice. Mm. If you saw this video on your For You page, you already knew I was coming. This is the reason why it will never bother me when men are in my comments saying, women are lying. They don't they don't want to be alone. They're going to die miserable and, and lonely and just lead terrible lives without a man in it. Guys, this is going to be a really big word for you, okay? But are you ready, men? It's called projection. Now, it's, it's a big one, you know, so I'll put the spelling down in the, um, in the caption. But y'all can Google it and then just sit with it. Sit with it. Oh, I'd like to be a little bit critical of men here in the way they've been responding to the 4B movement. The 4B movement may seem like a threat, but what men are being invited to do is to rise. But men lack a great deal of common sense in this area. What do I mean by common sense? I mean the world that we share in common with other people through our five senses. I believe that you believe that water rolls downhill. I believe that because it's common sense. We can sense it. Do you know any women? Haven't you ever heard them talk? You know, my mother, her first son, her husband abandoned her and left her with nothing. She had to endure that. That is not an uncommon story. What men are doing and what they're being taught to do by innumerable relationship coaches is to respond to their beliefs, not to women their assumptions, their expectations. If you started from a different assumption, you would end up at a different result. You only really meet real women. But the thing is, you're not meeting them. You see the woman and you meet what you think about them. You're going through your mind and not recognizing that this is what you think about them. You think that's them. And it can be terribly wrong. And women have had to endure this with regards to repeated bad experiences. You can train a cat to be afraid of a mouse with loud noise. You just repeat it. You create the expectation in the cat of what happens when it sees a mouse. And then every time it sees a mouse, it remembers and it feels that fear again. Men, if you have ever had a nightmare, say, for example, you felt yourself falling in a dream. Was the fear real? Yeah. Was the circumstance real? No. Just because you feel something doesn't make it real. Have you ever been accused of something you did not do? Or have you ever misplaced your wallet and suspected, suspected somebody took it until you found it exactly where you left it? Did you have a feeling when you suspected it? What was that feeling? Imagine a man going out to the same job he's been doing for 10 years, backs out of his driveway every day the same way. One day, as a result of not setting his alarm, he wakes up late for a very important meeting. He runs outside, it's dark, it's storming out, throws himself into his car, turns it on, throws it in reverse and backs up and bang, he hits another car starts freaking the fuck out. He starts yelling at the other driver, gets out of the car to go inspect the damage. Not only is the other car empty, it's properly parked. Realizing, of course, that it was all his fault, at that point, he would probably be embarrassed. But the world doesn't always give us examples of when we're wrong, to show us that we're wrong we can continue to maintain the error. So here's the thing about that story. 
Not only did the other driver exist only in the man's imagination, his relationship to that man also existed only in his imagination. That never fucking happened. But was his anger real? Based on things that never happened? These women are trying for something better. And they're trying to do something they haven't done. In all my dating profiles, non-monogamy is one of the first things. I joined a free love commune when I was 18 years old. So there's no way I'm going to date a woman who is not at least open and interested in that. Now that cuts off 95% of women. The only difference between me and the 4B movement is they've gone just 5% more. I suspect that any woman meets a man she genuinely likes, and she change her mind. All this talk about high value women and high value men, that's fucking bullshit. Relationships are about intrinsic value. If you don't know what that is, you've got nothing. You have nothing. It doesn't matter how much fucking money you have. If there's no affection, no genuine affection, You've got nothing. And if you're pretending to have affection when you don't, that's even worse. So you've got all these fucks like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson holding up traditional relationships like a specimen in a jar of fucking formaldehyde. Oh, this should be your model. It's dead. And it's been dead. Now, if anybody is an exception to that, good on them. I, I wish them well. Prove me wrong. But for the most part, it's fucking mechanical. I can understand why women don't want that. I've been dating older women since I was 19. There are a few exceptions. I think about the last five or six lovers I've been with. They've all been divorced. They're willing to do something outside of the tradition because the tradition failed them. The tradition sucks. Why do I say that? Because I have fucking eyes. I can see what people are doing. I wrote this book in 1998. I've written two other books. Every one of them has challenged the tradition. That however women are doing it, they're challenging the tradition. The venom that men are spitting at women for aspiring to something better. Do you think that we have reached the summit of human relatedness? Is that what you think? That there's no place higher? Well, in order to arrive at that conclusion that you know what's best in relationship, you have to not only assume you know everything that's possible, but also have the wisdom to fucking judge it before you've ever even experienced it. That is arrogant as hell. He hates you, they hate us. Men do not like us. Um, be alone. That's really the only other option. Just be alone, look in the mirror, sit with yourself, cry, have an ego death, and then get really hot, get a bunch of hobbies, be extremely successful, and write a fucking book or something. Just be alone. Oh my God. It is so much better than being with someone who fucking hates your ass. Ladies, I want you to listen very carefully to this video that I'm about to play. Especially my single ladies out there who are thinking about getting married. Make sure you watch this before you sign that dotted line. Especially now that Republicans are trying to get rid of no-fault divorce. Talk about those structures of marriage. People love to talk about that type of shit. I want to hear you talk about it. <laughs> I mean, marriage is literally invented as the slavery of women. They called slavery of black people chattel slavery, and they called the slavery of women marriage. It's really? Just, like, was, that's just... It was made up to trade women as property because patriarchy happened first. At the end of the Neolithic era, when people started farming, certain people were like, well, if we farm, then we need private property to say what land is mine so that I know what food is mine. And therefore, what we were doing before where people had kids and everybody raised everybody it's like now i need to know what children are mine because i need to know who i can make work this farm and who i'm responsible to feed and in order to know what children is mine i need to know what woman is mine and 
boom, you get marriage. And then that goes to Europe and then gets Christianized and become, and then they use Christianity as a weapon, as a sword to hold to all of our necks to colonize the entire planet. The normative culture that we're all treated like is just regular when it's actually Neil got cut off at the end, but he says that marriage is actually something very new, current iteration of it. And we act like this is just human nature and how it's always been, but it's actually the product of a system looking to exploit women for free labor and for childbearing and child rearing. Thank you all again for joining me. If you decide to subscribe to my channel, baby, hit the bell and click all notifications so you know when I upload and when I'm live and check out my shorts. And thank you so much for joining me and I will be showing you some more things, okay? So come on back. Thank you so much. Bye.